I wonder what it must have been like for the Filipinos who worked for the Japanese during the Japanese occupation. It was during that time that the generally positive word collaborator took on a very negative meaning. They were regarded as traitors. And I imagine St. Matthew the Apostle, whom we celebrate today, in that kind of a situation, when Jesus called him to become part of his core group of 12. I wouldn't be surprised that the negative reaction came not just from the Pharisees, but also from the followers of Jesus. John tells us in his gospel, you remember that reading in chapter 6, the conclusion of the bread of life discourse, that some of the other disciples eventually defected from Jesus' group. Kasi hindi na nila matanggap yung tinuturo niya. I am sure there were also those who left because they could not stomach the idea of being in the company of people like Matthew. There is actually a little bit of a confusion, you know, in the gospel narrative about the call of Matthew. And it has always been presupposed that it was Matthew who invited Jesus and his companions to his house for a dinner. Actually, it seems to be the other way around, as narrated by Matthew himself. Jesus, according to the evangelist, was passing by when he saw Matthew seated in his tax collector's post and invited Matthew to follow him. And the scene that follows is a table fellowship. And the lines that follow read this way, while he was at table in his house. He was at table in his house. Many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. Kaya, the question is, who was a table in whose house? Kaninong bahay? And it is the translators who cause the confusion by supplying their own interpretation into the translation. Kasi, ang sinasabi lang ng text, while he was a table in his house. Hindi sinasabi kung kaninong bahay. The New International Version puts the name of Jesus while Jesus was at table in Matthew's house. Eh, wala naman yung names doon. They are only pronouns. Sabi nila sa Italian, traditore, traditore, translator, traitor. Minsan, by translating, they are putting in their own interpretation. Yeah, I am inclined to believe that it was Jesus who said, follow me and invited Matthew to dinner in Jesus' house. Yes, it appears that Jesus had a house or a home base in Capernaum where he gathered his disciples. Merong isang komentaryo si San Beda, Saint Bede, on this particular scene of the call of Matthew, which apparently was very instrumental in the personal conversion story of a young man named Jorge Mario Bergoglio, who would later, of course, become our Pope Francis. When he was just 17 years old, and he went to confession. You know, Pope Francis 
loves to refer to that particular moment, that particular confession as a turning point in his life. It is what he would later be reminded of when he was already a Jesuit. Each time that, you know, on this day that the, the Feast of St. Matthew was celebrated, he would read the second reading from the proper of the saints. Kasi hindi nagbabago yung second reading na yon from the proper of the saint, saints. And it is the commentary of San Beda, St. Bede. And that particular part where St. Bede says, Jesus saw Matthew through the eyes of mercy and chose him. So through the eyes of mercy and chose him. And you know, this became the source of inspiration ni Pope Francis. When he became bishop, ginawa niyang motto, Miserando atque eligendo. Saint Bede actually imagined that particular line. Wala naman siya dun sa gospel eh. I call it reading between the lines. He is amazed about Jesus seeing Matthew through the eyes of mercy and choosing him. His reflection, you know, reminds me of that part in the song, Looking Through the Eyes of Love. Remember that part that says, I can see what's mine now, finding out What's true since I've found you looking through the eyes of love? Ano bang meron doon sa tingin ni Jesus? What was there about that look that changed Matthew? Well, maybe all his life Matthew must have felt that people look at him with the eyes of judgment and condemnation. Collaboratorian. In the TV episodes, The Chosen, which I recommended that you watch many times already, Matthew is portrayed as a person with autism. And there is a commentary on The Chosen by Kevin Keating that says that Matthew is portrayed in The Chosen as being drawn to Jesus not so much because he is a sinner in need of forgiveness. The main problem that Matthew is struggling with is not sin. It's rejection. And what Jesus offers for his struggle is not heart transformation and forgiveness, but rather acceptance and inclusion. Palagay ko, Pope Francis felt the same way when he made that confession many years ago at the age of 17 and then decided to join the Jesuits. I imagine how that singular turning point in his life is now making an impact, such a huge impact on the history of the church. That is why he has that particular slant for mercy. He will probably be known as the Pope of Mercy. Now we have a Pope who constantly admonishes us to learn to look at other people through Jesus' eyes of mercy and to set aside the prejudgments that we tend to develop when we look at them through the lenses of moral uprightness and doctrinal uprightness. Meron akong isang paboritong painting of this scene of the call of St. Matthew at ang painter as si Caravaggio. And in that painting, Jesus is pointing at Matthew. 
in his tax collector's post. And Matthew, in the painting, is reacting with eyes wide open while pointing at himself with a look of surprise. You can actually guess what Matthew is saying. Who? Me? Sino? Ako? And I think, if I were the one who painted that scene, palagay ko, I know what title to give it. And the title is, Yes, You. And perhaps, if Matthew were to react, why me? And the Lord would probably say with a smile, why not you? Oh, dear brothers and sisters, yes. Only through the eyes of mercy can one look at a sinner and see a potential saint.